Um, this past week, a one song has been echoing in my mind. This song, the title of the song is With All I Am. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. I belong to you. As I sing and listening, sing and sing along, you know, um, I find myself emotionally, you know, um, filled with gratitude, the assurance, joy, and yet relief knowing that Jesus, yes, I believe in you. I believe in you. I know I sin many times. I know I come short of your glory. You know, I have been called to be a pastor, minister, but I know I don't do my best job sometimes. I know uh, there is a, this devil in me keeping fight against my spiritual journey. But nonetheless, even though I fail, even though I struggle, you know, there are challenges in my life. Jesus, yes, I still believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you, meaning, you know, I am yours. I'm certain, I'm 100% sure that you will take care of me. When I fall, you will pick me up. When I'm down and lost, you will discover me and take me out. When I have made lots of mistakes, you will bring me to a place of hum humility, bring me to a re re place of restoration, restore me to a place where I have to only depend on you. You know, this, that's how I, was, how, I, how, how I was feeling this week, you know, as I was listening to this song. And as a closing song today, at, after my sermon, you get to hear the song. And I hope that the blessing and touching of the Holy Spirit as, the, as it came upon me, I hope it comes upon you as well. So, as I was reading today's scripture and meditating, up, meditating upon it, I realized that this Jesus that I believe in, this Jesus that I belong to, you know, shows most human side more than any other place in the scripture. That means, which means, you know, Jesus knows exactly what we go through. Jesus knows exactly, understand how we feel in times of agony, in times of pain and suffering. And I hope and pray that as we get into the scripture, you would encounter this Jesus. This Jesus who, you know, sympathizes with you, who identifies with you when we are in times of difficulties and sufferings and pain. So the scripture actually today begins with a very familiar, familiar scene where Jesus is at the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, um, very next morning, very next morning, 9 o'clock, you know, we all know that Jesus will be crucified on the cross. So he barely had 12 hours or less than 12 hours before he died on the cross. And there, here comes Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, crying out and praying to God. Well, the Bible doesn't explain in the Gospel of Matthew, but Synoptic Gospel, you know, according to Luke's Gospel, as Jesus was crying out, you know, his sweat, his sweat was like a drop of the blood falling to the ground. He was so stressed to the point of death that he was crying out to God, Abba, Father, if it's possible, 
I know I have come for this very purpose to die for the humanity. I have very come for very, very purpose to die on the cross. But if it's possible, please remove this cup from me. Let this hour pass. With you, all things are possible. And the scripture says that Jesus did that three times going back and forth, pray and pray and pray, crying out. But yet, we see this, his close friends, disciples, Peter and two sons of the ZBD, James and John, they did nothing but falling into sleep. So Jesus had to come back three times, wake them, waking them up, telling them, my fellow disciples, can't you just wake an hour? I mean, watch out and pray so that you might not fall into temptation. Spirit is willing, but flesh is weak. You don't seem to understand what's going on. Well, this is a very familiar passage to most of us. If you have been to church, grew up in the church, you read about it, you heard about it, right? You know, so as I was reading and preparing for a sermon, I had to search God. I had to ask Him, God, I mean, what's the point? What's the really point of this whole passion story? Everybody knows this story. You know, what is, what is it that you want me to deliver out of this passage Speak to me so that I can preach. And we don't illustrate, we don't, my encounter this past week, you know, um, something speak to me in my heart. And all the things bringing, start bringing together. Because I begin to see myself in, the, in, the, in this text. I begin to see myself in the disciples' shoes neglecting, neglecting Jesus' pain, neglecting Jesus' agony. As Jesus was crying out, Abba, Father, if it's possible, please remove this cup from me. Let this hour pass. And his sweat was like drop of the blood falling to the ground. You know, I find myself in the shoes of these disciples, not just three times, but many, many times, you know, I neglect the pain and the suffering of Jesus Christ, falling into sleep like disciples. When I see my church family, you know, going through sickness, you know, uh, most of times, I am compassionate. Most of times, I am, you know, uh, sympathetic. But sometimes, especially last year, during this pandemic, I'm making a confession right now to you. <laughs> last year, during the pandemic, you know, uh, I have treated some of our church members casually. I wasn't much sympathetic. You know, um, your pain is endurable, okay? It's bearable. Pain comes and goes. You should be all right in a few days. Get up and move. I didn't tell them. I didn't tell them, of course. I'm in a big trouble. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's been on my mind. It's been, it's been on my thoughts. I have treated them very casually. And this past week... I was able to see some of our church members in the hospital, in the nursing home, you know, for a long time, since last March. I knew that they had a surgery, they fell, they broke their bones and, you know, replacement and then going back to the hospital and, and suffering with the COVID. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen them since March. All I did was pick up the phone and talk to them. Oh, my, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry for what you go through. You know, uh, we've been praying for you. We'll continue to pray for you. Okay, um, bye. 
And then I hung up the phone. That's what I did because I made an excuse myself. You know, I'm not allowed to go into any nursing homes. I'm not allowed to go into hospital. And I become, you know, um, complacent and lazy. Just talking on the phone. We pray for you. So after those visits this past week and reading upon today's scripture, you know, um, I begin to, you know, um, see God is convicting me and convicting my heart. Gee, how many people, how many people in this church, FEMCBC, are going through very difficult issues in, in life? Financial issue, job issue, health issues, and relationship issue. But because you're not facing those things, even though you are supposed to care for them, even though you are supposed to pray for them, you come alongside to encourage them, you didn't do it. You have thought in your heart, get well, get better, you know, stand up, get up and move on. Gee, you act so, you know, heartless, cold-hearted, unfeeling for those things. And that's how, you know, I was feeling. That's how I believe God was convicting my heart, you know, through this passage and through, you know, my visit this past week. You know, the message that I believe God is reminding me through this passage is that Jesus had to endure this incredible pain. He was so afraid. He was so scared. He was so dismayed and discouraged. And even his disciples, they were turning away. Right before they came to this Garden of Gethsemane, in the same chapter, chapter 6, you will find that they were at, in Mark's upper room and having this last supper. And during this last supper, you know, Jesus said, every one of you will be scattered, fall away and drop me. And Peter says, no, I'll never, I'll never turn away from you. But Jesus says, before the rooster crows, crows you will deny me three times. And exactly that's what I see myself in the shoes of Peter, in the shoes of disciples, running away, neglecting Jesus' pains and sufferings. And we see this human side of Jesus Christ. He was so, you know, fearful, so anxious, so discouraged, probably more than dying on the cross, dropping of the blood, falling to the ground. If you can imagine the experience, the moment at the Garden of Gethsemane must have been really difficult for our Lord. The story makes sense to me because I see uh, my family sometimes goes through, you know, sickness. And my uh, church family, my church people that I serve, that I minister to, they go through sickness at times. But if I'm not careful, if I'm not paying attention, because God blessed me so much, you know, I feel like I'm in a good shape. I feel like I'm in a good uh, physical condition, but so if I'm not if I'm not careful, if I'm not paying attention, you know, people around this church, you know, uh, loving people, then, you know, I might neglect their pain, their suffering, simply just picking up picking up on the phone and say, I'll pray for you, get well, and you know, um, I'll see you soon. So heartless, so unfeeling, cold-hearted. For those, those people, you know, I might fall into this, uh, onto this um, problem as well. Our Lord Jesus Christ went through, you know, very excruciating and painful event to tell you and me this morning. Hey, even though you fall, even though you're down and out, even though, you know, you, your life is in misery, even though you're hopeless, even though, you know, everybody deserts you, I know exactly what you go through because I know I went through this. I know how you feel. 
That's the exactly message that God is speaking to me. Have more passion, have more compassion and sympathy for your folks, okay? Your, your church members, they are your brothers and sisters. Don't be so hard-hearted, cold-hearted. And I hope and pray that you get to hear the voice of Jesus Christ this morning. You know, he's saying, when I was, when I was captured that evening, you know, every one of my disciples, they took off. And I had to, I had to walk all by myself. I had to walk all alone. Why did he do that? Because he's telling you and me, you know, I know how you feel in times of suffering and pain. I know exactly what you go through. So, so that you, you and I, we have more confidence to come before the Lord and calling him, Abba, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. So we could continue to serve him. Indeed, uh, brothers and sisters, Jesus uh, cared for us. Let us pray. Oh God, we, this morning we see the human side of Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive us as you go through this uh, painful, excru excruciating agony and, and passion. Um, we just fall into sleep, neglecting your pain and suffering. Lord, when we are afraid, when we are down and out, when we are discouraged, when everybody deserted us, help us to know that you're walking very closely with us. Restore us to a place where we will totally depend on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We get to hear the song that I uh, introduced to you. And this song has been really blessing on me uh, this past week, meditating upon, you know, sufferings and pain and death of Jesus Christ as it has been blessing on me. I hope it's been a blessing.